Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Old Mutual's Mindspace TV. I am Fifi Peters. Running a small business is tough enough, and it's often more a labor of love. Finding funding for a small business is even tougher these days, but in the past decade, some SMMEs have received a significant boost through the support of Old Mutual's Masisizane Fund. Now with me to chat about this fund and how it helps and contributes is the CEO, Zizi Nyanga. Welcome Zizi Po to Mindspace TV. So Thank tell you. us a bit about the fund, how, how does it work? The fund is an initiative of Old Mutual. We started in 2007 mm -hmm. after we decided with government and other stakeholders to use the unclaimed shares to make a difference in rural areas, uh, peri-urban areas and uh, small towns. We fund businesses in those uh, areas um, in agriculture, franchising, supply chain and manufacturing. Our aim really is to give hope to people that ordinarily wouldn't get access to finance. So we also trying to make sure that we don't always have to come to uh, urban areas mm -hmm. for us to find uh, work and also to put food on the table. And how did you specifically get involved in this fund? I am a chartered accountant by profession. I've always uh, loved money uh, or anything that... <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> that can teach me how to make money. So I have been drawn to entrepreneurship because of my passion to create rather than just consume. Sure. So I want to create a, leg a legacy, uh, not only for myself, but for black people uh, at large. So my interest is really to see how we can uh, increase the levels of entrepreneurship in South Africa. I started my development finance uh, journey at the IDC mm -hmm. and there, as you know, the sizes of the deals that are done are much bigger than uh, what, what we do at Masters and Fund. So I wanted to help people at grassroots level, but only not only to give them the funding that they want, but to scale them up to become bigger in the future. I mean, is helping people at grassroots level uh, the key reason why funds like Masisizana are so important? It is because if Masisizana fund and the likes are not there, a lot of people would be left behind. There are people that have ideas or even contracts uh, but have no means to uh, uh, make sure that those contra contracts are fulfilled. So it is important for us um, to fund the people that uh, the missing gap of some sort that is not helped by commercial banks or the big development finance institutions like uh, the IDC. So we find uh, people that really uh, are at a small scale but also have the potential to grow bigger. And then can you give us some examples about some of these businesses that uh, you have funded, particularly the success stories that you've been able to, you know, take from grassroots levels and scale up into successful businesses? It is a combination of uh, businesses that we funded. Some um, come to us with a contract and our aim to scale them up ensures that we help them to manufacture those um, products and uh, become fully f fledged manufacturers. One client that came to us uh, around I think 2005 with a contract of 800,000 is now generating revenue of about uh, 45 million. We've walked the journey with that client and we funded one contract and then uh, they, ca they came back with another contract and we helped them with a whole lot of things to make sure that they uh, they expand as a business. Other, co other businesses that we've helped are acquisitions. There's a team, a manufacturing entity that we funded in the Eastern Cape, an entrepreneur that had been knocking on all doors of mm -hmm. um, commercial banks and other funders and wasn't getting any help. We took um, uh, a chance with him and gave him finance and walked the journey with him. Today, he employs, employs more than 139 mm -hmm. uh, employees and is a very successful uh, business. If Masisizane wasn't there, he couldn't have gotten uh, funding and also get the uh, strategic partners that we came with to, you, to, to fund uh, his business. Sure. Are you able to give us uh, some of the names of these businesses? <laughs> I am. So we've uh, funded uh, the likes of CTU Manufacturing Co-op. It's a cooperative that's um, owned by women. And there's two ladies there, um, uh, Mamnon Tlantla in particular, who lead uh, that uh, co-op. Very successful, very determined. It is what I call a partner in, 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 in a client. He, she doesn't just wait for us uh, to help her. She helps 
him, uh, himself, herself. So the other example is um, the timber manufacturer in um, uh, Eastern Cape, it's WP Timber Manufacturing that was acquired from a person that uh, died and the wife decided to sell the business. We funded that together with our sister company, the O. Mitchell Foundation and other strategic partners and uh, made sure that that entrepreneur now has a business uh, that is run uh, properly. There are many other examples. We funded a lot of uh, businesses in franchising, fuel stations um, mm. in Gauteng, in the Eastern Cape, in KZN and Limpopo. We've also funded contracts, uh, people that have contracts with government, they come to us uh, to make sure that they get money to fulfill those contracts. There are many examples as I say. I can hear, I can hear. But when you're talking about walking the journey with some of these businesses, I imagine you mean that it's more than just giving them money to scale up. It is. We, we, we learned the hard way that you can't just throw money at entrepreneurs. You need to give them funding, but also follow the money. Otherwise, it's not going to come back so that you give it to other entrepreneurs. So we offer at Masters and Fund uh, the funding and business support through our post-investment monitoring function that says, how do we take care of the client once we've given them the money? What needs do they have in the form of mentorship or uh, scaling up their business or uh, getting grant funding from strategic partners? There's a lot of things that need to happen once the money has been given to the entrepreneur. Otherwise, if you don't follow the money, the chances are mm. it doesn't come back. And for small businesses that are looking to knock on the door of Masisi Zana Fund and other fund managers who provide development finance like yourselves, what advice would you give to them, and especially in this tough economic environment where everyone is feeling the pinch? It is a very tough environment. Um, as I say, that our per the performance of the entrepreneurs right now is affected, um, leading to them not being able to repay loans. Mm -hmm. They have to have a good relationship with the funders such that if there's a problem, they are quick to raise it before it gets uh, out of control. So it is important for the entrepreneurs to understand that they can't run, they can't necessarily run the show as a one-man band. There's a lot of uh, skills that are required and it's rare that you find an entrepreneur that can be jack of all trades sure. and uh, succeed. So I would advise them that they become partners in the journey and uh, bring their A game in terms of uh, what do they want out of the business, what are the uh, key gaps that they've identified so that we don't come and help them and they are folding arms. We work together in trying to make the business uh, a success. And I'm interested in finding out if the type of businesses that you're funding now is changing somewhat as everybody's ready for the fourth industrial revolution. So are companies who tailor whatever solution they have to some of the economic challenges here in South Africa, but also leverage technology, yes. more uh, companies that are likely to get the tick from uh, funds like yourself? Yes, it is important. It is important for us to evolve. Um, you will know that we have bias towards women, youth, and people living with uh, disabilities. In the agriculture space, it's very difficult to attract the youth. So currently, we are finding ways of attracting youth in agriculture, youth in fintech type um, initiatives and businesses, because we can't offer funding for businesses that are for the past. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that we evolve the sectors that are relevant now and in the future is what we are looking at. So technology is a big factor, particularly because we find people in remote areas. Mm -hmm. How do we make sure that our, our clients access us uh, quicker? How do we make sure that we get financial records uh, quicker? How do we make sure that the decisions that businesses make uh, happen uh, quicker using technology? So right now, on top of my mind and uh, together with the team is how do we innovate uh, as a fund? How do we use technology mm -hmm. better? and sort of review the sectors that we are funding because those sectors may be relevant to older mm -hmm. uh, type uh, entrepreneurs and the youth uh, um, that will be leaders of tomorrow are interested in different uh, types of um, businesses. Mm -hmm. A black entrepreneur in South Africa struggles more to find funding because of many issues, uh, lack of collateral and uh, other things. So we, we cannot exclude uh, black entrepreneurs because uh, the find themselves sitting here in Joburg. Mm. Our offices operate from um, Johannesburg, uh, KZN and uh, East London and Limpopo 
and we make sure that um, our criteria that says we fund businesses that are 51 percent or more black owned is what we are driven by the rest then means that we also focus on uh, women mm -hmm. youth and people living with disabilities people say that women are the own reason or their own downfall for not accessing funding uh, the main factor that always comes up when you speak with funders is you know the lack of confidence that women have in the business plan that they sometimes uh, give to funders your advice uh, for women to make sure that they don't get so many rejections that is the common norm right now in South Africa I, I beg to differ. I do not think that women don't get funding because of confidence. I think that women carry a lot of weight and burden on their shoulders. Not only do they try and make uh, ends meet and put food on the table, they carry their families, their spouses, their extended family and everyone else and they still need to run the business and run it successfully. So I think that we need to find a formula that says in this day and age the expectations for women have changed. We have become providers and homemakers at the same time which is a very challenging thing to achieve. So in terms of funding I think that uh, black entrepreneurs in general uh, struggle to find uh, funding. Firstly, the history of our country is such that entrepreneurship is not something that we uh, default towards. Uh, we want to be hired by someone and paid uh, 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 money from corporate jobs. So I think that once we start with entrepreneurship, mm -hmm at a uh, school level around the tables when we're sitting at home and talk about how to cr uh, create a business from scratch at school how do we teach our kids to have projects that uh, encourage them to build businesses and by the time you get to a level where you are old enough to start a business you mm -hmm. have been exposed uh, to what the key ingredients of a successful entrepreneur um, is i recently uh, came from uh, germany and i was quite inspired by the Germans there mm. um, teaching entrepreneurship from school and ensuring that people understand mm. that the backbone of G the German economy is um, SMME. Over 90% of the businesses in Germany are family owned and SMME is, is something that is driven from an early age. Wouldn't that be great if we followed the same model? My dream <laughs> is to make sure that that happens in South Africa. Well, thank you very much, Zizi Po, for your time. That's where we leave it for this segment of Mindspace TV. Hit it into a short break. It continues when we return. Stay watching. Hey, my name is Mandi Samzizi, the owner of Mandisa's Market in Soweto, as well as the owner of Aurora Marketing. I believe I was entrepreneurial from a very young age, um, kind of very free-spirited in my thinking, and just with my friends coming up with things when we would play. Uh, so, finished varsity, got into the advertising space, found myself at Red and Yellow, uh, was at an ad agency in Johannesburg for about two years. Great experience, great exposure just working with brands like Coke, MTN, Absa, A1 GP Racing, and uh, but a part of me was just like, I believe I can actually start carving a niche for myself. Yeah, from 2010 to 2014, I then found myself working in the retail property sector. Uh, managing shopping centers and that's where I obviously got um, time spent with uh, one of the greatest I think business people to come out of Soweto which was Dr. Richard Maponya. So I registered Aurora in 2015. Uh, this is where I then formally stopped working and started knocking on the doors of various retailers um, for work, for marketing work, just around concepts concepts around Christmas decor in the shopping center space, so we do that. 
We also provide bespoke marketing concepts and campaigns for retailers in shopping centers. Um, so between straddling that um, space and being an actual retailer, I've just found a lot of fulfillment. Just marrying the two, so being able to advise um, one of the larger retailers in a mall and then taking the same feedback back into my particular store. I think the retail property sector is just so um, corporatized and being just a, a lone wolf, uh, a single woman hunting for um, business in that space um, it was quite scary, it was daunting. Um, I didn't know if I'd make it past the first three months. I didn't know if I'd made the right decision by quitting my job. First big break. I'd say would be getting an opportunity to work on the shopping centers owned by the Public Investment Corporation because that really set me um, or put me in the sort of framework I needed to be recognized um, on by bigger property uh, companies, uh, management companies. So that, I really say, was the springboard that enabled me to put that big name on my CV. There was a lot of talk uh, from local government, um, in visas within the township and the town halls that I attended, where there was a call to action for uh, local um, store owners to um, almost buy in bulk or group, a group up or group into spaces where they'd be able to approach a wholesaler or a retailer for bulk purchasing because a lot of locals had closed down their stores. And then I think it's at that point where Pick and Pay engaged the government um, just to seek to assist this particular phenomenon of local businesses closing for various reasons. And at that point I think Old Mutual um, then jumped on board and through that they have a fund called the Masasizane Fund. Um, which specifically focuses on township and rural um, funding. So that's how they, I got to find out about them. It was via the initiative between um, GDED and Pick and Pay. Okay, as an entrepreneur um, looking for funding or some form of finance for my ideas, uh, I knew that this would never have been possible without Old Mutual. And what I like about their thinking and where they're going as a business around getting local entrepreneurs started up and also taken through a rigorous process in terms of understanding what it means to keep a business afloat and the support you would need once you've got the funding. And so in partnership with Masisizane Fund, within which is within Old Mutual, and the leadership of Zizi Ponyanga, who is the CEO of Masisizane. I think they've done a, a sterling job. Um, they've been able to, on a monthly basis, meet with us um, as retailers in the township. They've been able to understand and meet whatever sort of training or additional support that we have needed. So I think Masisizane's vision as well um, is just so apt. And its leadership is also under a woman who's very progressive in her thinking. And I think just the leadership um, that we have from Masisizani, from Old Mutual, has just been phenomenal. And I wish more entrepreneurs could benefit from Old Mutual and Masisizani being part of this growing economy, um, which seeks to create more entrepreneurs, who will then impact uh, the social base of our economy. Um, we've, I've had the privilege of hosting um, Old Mutual and Masisizane here within my business when we, we opened and the conversation around them getting to understand my roots, what drives uh, my business, um, um, what drives me, was just so touching because I just didn't ever think that a girl from, you know, the streets of Soweto, walking the streets of uh, the business uh, world would be able to wine and dine the corporate sector. So even their approach is just very fundamental, fundamentally geared towards uplifting um, the, the grassroots economy. Masi Sizane hasn't just financed me. So even before they took a risk 
um, in investing in me, a non-entity, non-startup, previously in retail. They spend three to four months um, sitting down with me, analyzing my current businesses' uh, books, analyzing my behavior within the business, interrogating how I perceived the opportunity um, to be. So it wasn't just about looking at the financial framework of the opportunity. It was also engaging me on my plans and do I have a plan besides getting funding from them? Do I have a plan on an HR basis? So we worked through recruitment, the recruitment process, the legitimacy of um, the business in essence isn't just about balancing the books, having the books. It's so much more than that. It's making sure you've got the right insurance with Old Mutual for my staff, the right benefits. So I would say in getting into the, the business, um, there was a lot of support to make sure that this was the, indeed the correct decision and this was indeed the correct candidate. And yes, they took a leap of faith, but they also safeguarded um, the investment by providing the support. So it's one thing to give pers a person a hand over a check. I think it's another to constantly, um, continuously um, engage them and train them. They've been there, they provided post-investment support, which I think is also where the crux of running a, a medium-sized business of this is, because I'd like to go from good to great. I'd like to open a bigger retail store for myself in the shopping center space. I'd even like to one day perhaps be a mall developer. So if I can't get the post-investment uh, experience right and I learn the right things about how to use other people's money, what it means for other people to invest in me, then how will I move forward? So I honestly wouldn't be standing here today without Old Mutual and Masa Sasane. Oh, so many things drive me. Um, creating employment for locals, um, just seeing the impact that having a job and the fulfillment um, that giving jobs to people actually makes. So that's one of my biggest uh, drivers. So currently in, my, in this business we have 20 and in the other business 20, so to, in total about 45. So there's a 45 lives that we're changing. In essence, I, I try and keep myself centered on a daily basis. So just to get myself in, into a certain headspace in order to be able to then have the pep talk with my staff. So we've got a very open sort of communication, uh, direct communication with them on a daily basis. So I keep my staff motivated on a daily basis and I keep myself motivated on a daily basis because there's so many factors that impact uh, one's mindset as a business owner, it's cash flow, it's managing cash flow, making sure there's enough money to pay salaries, to buy stock, looking at the increase in the fuel price. As a businesswoman, I get a lot of um, other young women who, who come to me and say, look, I'm working, I've got this concept, I don't know if I should, if I should leave my job and get into business. So just on a one-on-one -on -one level, um, I empower women by actually being that source of inspiration. So I've got women I chat with either on my social network um, apps. I do quite a lot of that sort of mentoring, specifically on WhatsApp. Where that's where I give my pep talks, that's on the one-on-one -on -one level. And then for the women who work for me, um, I have predominantly a female staff uh, on purpose. Because retail isn't necessarily perceived to be um, with its long hours and environments conducive or suitable to women who have to look after children. So I specifically went for um, uh, just empowering women. So even the people who work for me feel empowered because they have jobs and they have a woman as a boss. I'd always say bed down the, the basics. Uh, from an education perspective. So even if you're not in, an uh, in a space to get quality education, there's the internet, there's spaces of uh, data and accessibility hubs. So get information that makes the journey uh, a little bit less 
painful in terms of lessons to be learned. So I'd say start, inform yourself. Secondly, be brave. Nobody will actually like to empower you um, at first hand. It's, it's, the onus is on you to seek that empowerment and to believe in yourself. And it, it doesn't matter if you fail. You could fail for like 50 years and, and make, make it on year 51. So to just, for that young person who's watching out there, I'd say keep your head up. The sky's the limit, honestly speaking. You're human, um, you can fall, it's okay. Dust yourself off and keep on walking and do look good while doing it.